Hi everyone, welcome to the session of the Artun Developer Conference where we'll be speaking about integrating Artuns with VR. Hatch contracted Infosys and received technical support from Bentley in order to achieve this. Within Hatch, we brand this application as Asset XR, and as mentioned before, it's our virtual reality and augmented reality entry to stream content out of Artwin into a Unity application. A quick introduction of myself. My name is Jared Marburg. Uh, my role at Hatch is Global Design Tools and Visualization Development Manager. I work for Hatch's digital business unit, currently focusing on our digital project delivery transformation program. Um, within that program, I'm responsible for the design tools and design visualization at Hatch. Um, the DPD program is being used to leverage and revolutionize the authoring and visualization applications, whether they be desktop or web services, to deliver our projects digitally using next-gen strategies and methodologies with our business drive to exceed our clients and market expectations. I have six, over 16 years experience in the industry and have had roles in systems implementation to enable digital project delivery, as well as actually delivering projects from both an EPCM and owner's perspective. I'd now like to hand over to my colleague at Infosys, Swapnil. Over to you, Swapnil. Thank you, Jared. Hello, all. I am Swapnil. Uh, I, I am working with Infosys for the last 10 years and over the last three to four years, I'm working with a COE within Infosys, a center of excellence for augmented reality and virtual reality. Uh, we are focusing specifically on engineering clients in this particular COE. Overall, I have got a 16 years of work ex, uh, mostly in CAD product development and customization. But uh, in this particular COE, we are currently working on uh, focusing on using Unity for providing XR technology related solutions to our engineering clients. Hatch is one of those wherein I'm actually helping Hatch as a solution architect to develop this particular application. We should not forget about Bentley as well. So um, the team at Bentley has been really very supportive in this particular project through all the different technical queries that we, have, we are pushing to them through the iModel JS or for all the different APIs that we are using for the different services from, from Bentley. Jared? Thanks, Watno. And yeah, to echo that, um, a lot of this wouldn't have been possible without the support and help of Bentley's technical department in the Artwin in the Art Art department. So while we're here, what was the need? Um, when Hatch first learned about the Artwin platform, we saw great potential um, on many fronts. Um, one of those value streams that we wish to embark upon for both internal project delivery teams as well as external clients and JV partners was the ability to leverage virtual reality and augmented reality from a central repository being the Artwin, uh, which has a great power in the sense that it's a CAD agnostic source. So what we did to remedy that that need or and provide a solution was through the Artwin iModel JS SDKs and APRs. We contracted Infosys, a specialist service provider in this field who has a vast wealth of experience in the mixed reality industry to develop Asset XR for us. It's been a complex undertaking and has required an ongoing collaboration with Bentley's R21 team, regularly, regular catch up on a weekly basis to provide both technical support and continuous improvements, updates, and advice to the R model JS interface and endpoints. So, a quick glance to the ecosystem. As mentioned before, we saw the value in the Artwin repository due to its agnostic sense. So, we can take tools, we can take content from authoring tools from all the major software vendors. We can federate them into a single repository. And then, from that single repository, we can stream them out and offer quite a few different business value feature streams. You would have heard or seen Asset, X, Asset XD from our previous, from the previous session through Greg and John. That's our web browser interface that we've extended with some additional hatch built on tools. And then down the bottom, which is what we're going to be focusing on talking about in this session, is Asset XR, which in essence is streaming out of the art and through a Unity interface. On the right is a few obviously common features and other business values, but that's not the focus of this discussion here today. Um, at this point, I'll, I'll hand over to Swapnil again to take us through the solution. Thank you, Jared. Uh, so as you can see here at the top right, top left, you can see the different design authoring tools that are being used by uh, the design users here, specifically in case of Hatch. So there are different Hatch users who use tools from Cwinds, Aviva, Autodesk. What they're able to do is their own content, once they are final, they're able to push to the iModel Hub as an iModel. 
this i model what we do is basically we are trying to uh, create a different hatch cloud per se in azure and we are trying to create these uh, these cloud instances closer to the users where they are so in this particular case we have three different instances created one in australia one in south africa and one in canada and in these instances what we do is basically we run a prefetch a job which runs at a specific time of the day and it downloads the various brief cases of the various uh, hatch projects that are being uh, looked at and then uh, you know those i models are getting downloaded we can, you can see here that there is a common i model brief case storage and that storage is what we are actually trying to uh, you know use for the different connections to the front end what we have also is basically a azure web app instance here what you can see here uh, this is basically uh, there could be one or multiple instances of this uh, there could be one or multiple instances of this wherein uh, you know uh, it depends on what area you are looking and what what is the amount of uh, network uh, the, the traffic that is coming to the web instance and what we do here is this is where we are using the i model js uh, uh, backend wherein uh, we are hosting our own apis using the backend framework from i model js and through those apis we are able to stream information from an i model to a unity front end okay this this particular connection the network connection is happening through a websocket and as you can see on the right we have all the unity applications on running on various devices at the moment we have uh, this particular application running on a htc vive and uh, a standard windows 10 uh, pc a, a, a desktop or a laptop going forward we also plan to actually uh, give this out for a hololens or a handheld devices like an ipad or a or a mobile phone uh, one more uh, or two more observations that i should as well mention here is you know we are also uh, using bentley web services uh, in these particular unity applications so for example we we are looking at something like a save view or we are trying to look at uh, issue services or database services so all these different uh, web services are currently hosted by bentley and we connect to the bentley web services to fetch all this information through rest apis and we are able to show that information that is already available let's say in the browser application uh, the same information we can actually see in the unity side uh, one more very important part here is uh, we are also connecting to the uh, hatch cde the content uh, the content common data environment and while tapping into it we are able to show all the different content that is hosted in the hatch side of it so uh, together the users from hatch are able to get uh, both side information so there could be information that is embedded in the bim data in terms of the i model but there is some other information that is internal to hatch which are able to access and through that it is making their design review uh, a perfect sense especially when they are doing it through the virtual reality environment one more thing that we are using is the photon collaboration service it's a third party service that we are using for collaborating so multiple users can actually come together and do a design review in a vr environment using photon collaboration services yeah that's what that is about the solution that we are currently having in terms of its overview uh, Derek, would you like to like to take it further Sure, great. Thank you, Sapnal. Um, at this stage, we'd like to transition to a demo, but I guess before I hit play on that recording is um, one thing we'd like to uh, mention as a value statement is our intent behind this is Artwin is the constant repository. It's our common reference points. And as you saw from the ecosystem slide, we give our users, our clients, our JV partners the ability to leverage different mediums to refer to the same project content, depending on infrastructure and equipment that's available to them. Thus having similar features and functionality, but different features and uh, different hardware that's available to them to allow them to explore the, the same common data source. So at that point, I'll hit play on the on the recording. Um, what this is highlighting is you have to authenticate as a user both through the Hatch ID and the Bentley IM system through connection clients. Once you've authenticated, it launches you into the application, which as a default is a virtual lobby. Once you've entered the virtual lobby, you feel immersed, you feel grounded, um, a little bit of a wow factor. 
It then, as you work your way around, you'll find the project dashboard. The list of projects presented to you are those that you have been granted access to. So there's role-based access control and identity management. Um, you can obviously manipulate the dashboard to suit to refine it based on names and filters and so on and so forth. You'll work your way through picking the R model. You pick the name version. You have the ability to cache that name version so that it improves your performance, um, or you can live stream. Once you've picked your associated project, R model and name version, you can use your entry points as a save view or through the model tree. At this point, you've seen a default bird's eye view point of entry. It gives you a contextual view of the model. It then launch, you can then teleport your way through it and use the typical expected virtual experience features such as nudge, flies and walkthroughs and teleports. Um, you select your objects. It's all intelligent, rich objects. The, the CAD contents transferred its way through to the item and hence we can see it here. We can pick on objects, interrogate them from a BIM properties point of view, either at the top of the tree level at the element through to our top assembly whether it be depending on the nature of the object you're interrogating will depend on which um, scope you select. Again, this is a similar experience in Bentley's web design review service. We can through go, as Swapnil mentioned, we can do multi-user immersed collaboration. So at this point, we're creating a collaborative room where we're giving it a name and a password to gain access control. We're inviting participants and we can actually see their avatar. So it's a, a well-experienced immersed um, experience where we, we actually feel like we're collaborating in a virtual sense. As a presenter, I can assemble the group so that everyone's assembled around me and looking at what I'm looking at. I have the ability to modify my settings for my audio devices. I can see tooltips on my controllers, so it's intuitive as to how to use it if you're a new user. Um, other similar features that we're making, like I said, medium agnostic, is the ability to measure objects, measure distances, adjust your snap points so that you can be very accurate and precise if need to, adjust your units of measure between millimeters and meters, as well as imperial and metric if need be. Those measurements are stacked, so you can refer back to them in the future if need be, if you're at a point of interest in taking lots of measurements to define whether something's able to have a forklift pass through, for example. There will, if a pipe rack's wide enough to put a new pipe on top, we can stack those. Those distance and those dimensions, we can teleport back to them after the fact. We can then reassemble the group at that point of interest to have a discussion around it. You can see it. There's a very detailed distance measurement. It's not just a, a delta. It's the X and X, Y, Z coordinates as well as deltas between those objects. Um, you can also do coordinate readouts. The virtual tablet is obviously expandable and collapsible. So it's, it's um, not too intrusive if need be. We can remove all of the measurements that were done. We can interrogate the model tree. So your, your assembly model could be at a top tree level filled, uh, filled by sub-assembly areas. We can manipulate the model content based on those sub-assemblies if need be, rather than get the context of the whole model, turn a sub-area on and off. And similarly, the layers, um, the categories. What we're seeing here is data visualization, which in essence is revisualizing the model to portray elements that have common properties or classifications so that they get portrayed in the same color. An example of that being um, show me all the piping where they where it's all the same outside diameter. So there's an array of outside diameters and we can contextualize the model to show us that, that array of sizes based on different visualization contexts. Um, we can toggle between um, being a presenter and attendee. Um, as an attendee, you can choose to break from the group if need be to go look at an area of interest, or if you need to look at a point of interest that the, the presenter is trying to point out, you can see there's a laser guarded pointer there to direct our attention to what he's looking at. And then similarly, you can exit out of the project um, experience and return back to the project lobby and go to another project of interest, or you can return back and close the application altogether and go back to your day-to-day -day work. Um, and at that point, uh, there's that that concludes the the demonstration point of it. Um, thank you for your time and attention, and I believe now we'll allow a few few minutes for Q and A. Swapnil, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you all.